is history, the future mystery. This moment is the game. Every second welcome, 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 welcome. It's so exciting. Welcome, Miracle Makers. This is Dr. Sarah Larson, and you are joining me and the singer of that incredible song, Craig Larson, on air at UBN Studio today. We're so grateful that you're here. Truly, you could be anywhere, and being with us is a gift to us, and it's a gift to the Miracle Maker inside yourself. Welcome, Craig Larson, baby. Thank you, my love. <laughs> we started the show because we spend so much time apart. And we figured if we did a project together, and this apart thing, we used to live in different cities and fly back and forth to see each other with two kids. And now we're both in Los Angeles. We're in Hollywood. Miracle Makers, you can create a life that you love and connect your soul with those that are of like mind that inspire you. And today we're bringing on the show such inspiration mm. for you. Baby, you haven't heard the story maybe. This was when we were in Salt Lake City. Mm. And um, last year, around this time, they had the Parliament of World Religions, which meets every four years. And it's a organization that's been meeting for over a hundred years that brings all faiths, including scientific based base faiths, all the way to the oldest faith. All the leaders, the Dalai Lama has spoken, the heads of every major religion is invited, their words are shared. And at this event, I met a dear friend, a woman that I love working with named Diana Kelly. And she told me, you've got to meet this woman, Tia Walker. You've got to meet this incredible of, um, and be part of this incredible event. And she began telling me the stories of Tia Walker and um, I met her and I was so and am so inspired. I canceled traveling with you and the kids, stayed an extra day to spend time working on an incredible project that Tia was bringing, working with Oprah and that organization to bring one of their projects forward. And so I stayed, Diana Kelly introduced us and the women and the men that were on stage were incredible. And so I can't wait. It's sort of, we're bringing Tia on and I want to tell you a little bit about what it feels like to be, because men with other men are so interesting. They, you know, um, they bump hands. They sh <laughs> Women with inspired women are so different. And so I'm so excited. Um, you guys talk about fishing. What do, what do you guys talk about? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> You know what we talk about? What's that? We talk about being great mm. stewards of the earth. Yeah. We talk about each other in the most inspired way, and we light each other up. Inspired women working with inspired women say, I've got this friend that I've got to connect you with mm. because this friend is so lovely to offer you this, or you can offer them this. And women create a network. And I think a network that's working is a net or something that catches you lifts you, inspires you to go higher and higher. And so I, I, I've spoken so much, but that's that's Tia Walker. Ooh, yeah, that sounds like quite the tribe. Wow. CEO. <laughs> We're going to bring Tia Walker on. Welcome, Tia Walker. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. It was it get much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Love it. we get, we really are, we've been married for how many years, baby? 
12 years. 12 years. And it's incredible how hot everything in our life is and full of passion, inspired. It's we run a race. We, we've got a nine year old and an 11 year old. And we love to spend time with people that inspire us. And so this date that we're on, Tia, <laughs> that you're coming <laughs> on, this um, being here, we're inspired by you and the work that you've done. And we can't wait to highlight what's possible when you work in synergy and what synchronicities come in when you live inspired and you're at the CEO level of your life and dreaming. And so um, I'd love for you to share how you became the inspired CEO. Wow. Well, I can say it really, truly. Well, first of all, I want to say, wow, what an inspiration the two of you are. You know, I love that you're able to, your dates are actually co-creating together and sharing inspiration together and other people's stories. And I'm thinking, okay, note to self for a future relationship. <laughs> uh, what a beautiful, beautiful um, weaving that you two have created. And I just really appreciate that. Um, so, my story, wow, um, my story, how I became the inspired CEO, you know, what's interesting to me is that even the, um, the name, um, it, it has uh, a special meaning to me because I actually refer to ourselves as conscious evolutionary officers, mm. and um, it's been uh, my life's work, truly, because I had the very good fortune of when my kids were very young, actually, this is what changed my life for my children. Um, I have three sons, but when my first son was born, I realized that I didn't want to leave him. Mm. I didn't want to leave him with someone else. So I, I ended up, um, I was working with DuPont on a project, and they had a global brand manager who was a woman, one of the very few, who just gave me an opportunity. And she said, you know, if you want to consult with us, we'd love to have you. And I sort of hung out my shingle, and from there, the doors kept opening, and I ended up uh, working with them in, I think it was six different divisions, and then I got Gore-Tex and Levi and American Express and a lot of Fortune 100 and 500 co um, companies that became clients of mine. And the thing that I noticed, though, was that at that time in my life, I felt as a woman and actually a woman of color, I want to say, too, because that, that for me, felt as though um, people were very, uh, they're like, you're different. <laughs> you're not like most people we know. And I knew what, where they were coming from, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. And for me, I was really aware of, like, what it meant to fit in in a corporate and really predominantly uh, male environment. So... What I ended up doing was I was compartmentalizing my life. So I would do the corporate thing, and there was like the corporate Tia. And then when I had my kind of my spiritual side and my uh, friends who we, we ran in different circles. And so at one point, I realized that I felt my life was fragmented by that. And I wanted to bring the wholeness of who I am into all of the work that I do. And so that's where the Inspired CEO really uh, came into being, where I wanted to show up and also challenge, you know, a lot of my clients to be that conscious evolutionary officer, knowing that, you know, as they grow their bottom line, that they're actually looking at the investment in their employees and taking them along with them and um, doing business a different way. So that was really the formation of the Inspired CEO, and um, I created that world that I wanted to create for myself in business and that I wanted the flexibility to be a mom, to go to basketball and soccer and lacrosse and, um, and yet to have my very, I love to be challenged and I love, um, I love smart people. <laughs> <laughs> I actually enjoy That's it. So, so I'm like, I want that so, simulation. 
awesome. Yeah. What a way to really let your children lead you into what's calling you to evolve in you that conscious evolution to bring that forward and then to help others move into that. And here in the U.S. and many, many places around the world, it's so important that what we're bringing forward is through our children. When you spend 15 minutes with a child, any child, whether it's your own or, um, and I, I love that you went to basketball games. We've organized our life and our kids have very much been the source of our inspiration, meaning how we bring in the new projects that we're going to work on, what gives to the future. And so I love that that led you. And I'd love to hear someone, a mom or a dad, that right now is working in an industry that they're not enjoying so much or they're not able to take that time for basketball or the bottom line has come to you've got to either choose this or that because time is so valuable. We can't put it in multiple places. What's the first step? Well, I, you know what I would think the first step is just being gentle on yourself. Mm. You know, it just seems like so many people put pressure on themselves to be something, to be the perfect parent or employee. And there's a sense for me that... Um, when you reprioritize your life, that life finds the life you want finds a way of happening. And so for me, when I made it a priority, even though, I mean, it's funny, even to this day, I, I have a lot of freedom, but if you look at my calendar, I literally schedule out the hours of the day. I mean, from morning until I go to bed, you look at my calendar, and it's scheduled out, but I will schedule in, you know, that downtime or, you know, I'm going to go hoop at the beach or, you know, whatever it is. But I, I, I do that because it doesn't happen if I don't create the time for it. So I think, you know, my first, my first you know, step is, you know, be gentle on yourself. And then I think it really is like be quiet and listen for what it is that you really want because there seems to be a path to whatever it is you want to create. Someone out there is doing that and they're successfully making money and doing it well. So I think there's a there's sort of you know many people have bought into this um, you know I can't and I don't know that it's having it all I want to say it's having uh, you know in my young parenthood it was very much um, you know raising a family and having that work balance and for me it's really allowing myself to keep those priorities um, front and center and so I think as you're wanting to step away from the um, maybe the the corporate grind, you know, you take little steps, you know, there are little incremental steps that you can take, um, allocating an hour or two, um, dreaming in what it is that you want to do, and then actually taking some action on it. You know, one of the things I started doing years ago, and that was when I had something that I desired, it was every day I'd, I'd take three steps towards it. So I would have three action items that would support that and it could be a phone call or a letter or just even allowing myself to um, you know stand upon a thought around it but but really keeping it alive in my life whether um, it was uh, you know a new business or or even just wanting to create more uh, just leisure time you know really allowing myself and I think oh my gosh I don't have the time for it you know, really putting that on the calendar and committing to myself. Um, and that's what, you know, it's worked for me. That's so beautiful. Mm. That's so lovely. And baby, as someone who works with, um, what comes up for you as Tia is sharing that? Well, you know, it is it is so critical, the, the first point to take it easy on yourself because, you know, I'm so blessed to have all this beautiful, amazing activities going on in my life. Like, every project I work on is expanding consciousness and is helping people. And I have so many of those going on right now and they're each amazing, but I don't have enough time in the day when I balance in spending time with you and balance in spending time with the kids to do everything. 
And it might be easy to say, oh, Mike, you're not doing enough or you're, you know, to get down on myself. But I just have to take a deep breath, you know, try and get one big rock handled per day and just keep moving on day by day, day by day. Because there's just so many yes. amazing projects to work on, but they, there's not enough time. There's not enough, you know, resources. I just have, but I, so I just have to know that each day, just tackle something, get that done and move on to the next day and the next day and keep that going. Because if you don't do that, then you drop out of a conscious entrepreneur, a conscious leader, and you become a frazzled, stressed out, <laughs> you know, I'm going to die of a heart attack yeah. leader, which is not how we want to approach life. I, that's such a beautiful point. That that point that you made, Tia, I often see the image of like office furniture. When m- making a metaphor, when we're having all of these things and we're wanting to change something, um, we if we were to move a big piece of office furniture out of a room, we do it and it's uh, we do it gently and we shift it and we work it out through the door. It's a metaphor that we don't take a hammer to it and break it down and get it out. We ourselves have a way that we've been working in the world, functioning, a process that we've been doing. And to really, truly live free and inspired, you have to schedule time Mm. to move the office furniture. And it has to be in the space of gentle, Mm. uh, uh, easing it out through the doorways or out, letting it go. So it takes time putting that on your schedule. And Oh my gosh, is um, I'm a driven woman. I worked as a med student I, and part of that was my desire to truly feel worthy in the world. Mm. I didn't sleep. I had trauma. I, I didn't miss a day of school. I didn't miss a day with any one of my clients or patients in the hospital. I was constantly on and yet, on the inside, uh, any time I missed something, metaphorically, I was taking a hammer to the furniture mm. in my head, um, in myself. I would break down and really be down on myself. And so I think this part of being very gentle, notice how you are with yourself. Those times... Um, if I ate too much or if I thought I said something that might have hurt somebody's feelings, I really would sort of tear myself up on the inside. I, it, it's really, really interesting because that being gentle and scheduling time to be gentle, to give to yourself and making yourself the priority. Today, I can get so much more done than I was trying to do without um, sleeping or without giving to myself. So that's bravo. And then action. Tia, I love this part around action. You get, anytime you take a step, in and listing out three steps that you can take. They could be big or small, but moving in the direction that action breaks down any fear that you might have. It allows the subtle energy within yourself to believe a little bit more and it expands you. And so that was just so beautiful. And I would like to know more about the ways that you work with women in particular. What comes up? What are some of the things that you help them with? Well, I think, you know, self-care is a big piece. And, and I, I didn't start out as, um, you know, this is my, my work. Well, I worked with women for many years. But it wasn't in the area of... Um, personal growth and development, it was more, you know, helping them with their business structure and, um, you know, strict business consulting. But what I found was that many of the women who were clients of mine, they were, fan- I mean, unbelievable business women, but their personal lives were a mess. And so it was like, I am not really serving them if I don't look at them and take a more holistic approach to 
my practice to the work that I do with them. And so for me, it always starts with the person because it weaves into their business life and, and, you know, family and everything. So the things that I really like to do with women is I um, started doing this, gosh, I want to say it's been 15 years ago, and um, I love to travel. It's just, you know, I love other cultures and um, experiences, and so I started taking women on business retreats. And um, a lot of them would say, are you kidding me? You know, like, I don't have enough time to do that um, because they were so busy. And I, and I would say, you know, it, it is counterintuitive that you're going to go away and you're actually going to get more done than if you're just kind of hunkered down and, and trying to do the thing. And so enough of them said yes to, to really create this, um, this beautiful um, retreat and almost, um, I want to say, respite from the world, you know, for a little bit. So I, I started doing retreats. I love it. It's at the heart of what I do because I feel it's a part of that, that self-care piece. And also, you know, the thought that, you know, strong women, there's a saying, strong women need to be held strongly. And I, I believe that deeply. For me, I... I love it when I am challenged by uh, putting things together, but I no longer do things alone. I no longer do the silo thing as I used to do in the past. So uh, one of the things I do with work in the feminine, because that's that's the other thread that goes through all of the work that I do, is that really bringing women back into that place of remembrance of the divine feminine within within us. And I know my path coming back to her. Um, you know, it was it was not easily found in that, um, you know, I I worked myself to the point to where, you know, I had um, high high blood pressure and I mean really dangerously high, and um, and just knew that I was stressing and doing things that weren't serving me, and I and I realized like I was trying to orient from a very masculine space that was not me. And so I decided to start doing the way I do work differently. I just knew what was modeled for me. It was very much in the masculine, and that's what I knew to follow. And so when I started um, looking for, which I, there were very, I mean, so many inspirational women who were role models, um, but I, I didn't have them close in my life. I had to really seek them out. And the more and more that I deepened in the work of the feminine, um, the more I wanted to share that. So that's a big part of my work is how we do business consciously in the feminine, and that re- that actually is for men and women. You know, it's just a different That's different way um, to do business. So, so beautiful um, yeah. to stand mm-hmm. in your form, to stand as a woman as a woman, or as a man as a man. We were designed with these bodies to be able to achieve so much. I believe there are no accidents. If you're a man. You're meant to be that energy in the world. And whatever is within you is so uniquely yours. And whatever masculine energy, as well as the feminine energy, the way each one of us can do things. And I've, it's so important, anyone that's listening, dear Miracle Makers, you listening, it's so important to get this, that we can all go through the same event, but each one of us is going to have a different process, internal process of what's happening and a response that comes out from that internal process. And when you go on sacred travel, that's why Greg and I are so passionate about bringing people to Egypt and bringing them on sacred trips as well, Tia, we found such an amazing thing happens when you get the inspired out of their comfort zone in a place that they really have to experience things. They get in touch with the inner wisdom, the inner miracle maker, the inner inspired, conscious, evolutionary um, officer within them. And so that's been one of the things that really shows up. And on, on your best day, 
on your best day, you being someone else is never as possible or powerful as you being yourself. If you're trying to be something you're not, you're never going to be as powerful as you being even a fragment of what you are. And baby, I'd love for you to t- chime in here as we're talking to Tia and our miracle makers. Yeah, well, there's lots of great stuff here. You know, it's, it is true and so important, you know, even for, for guys, self-care, because it all comes down to you have to, you know, your inner world is a reflection of your outer world. And you have to, you know, find that balance, go within, anchor yourself within to be a, a powerful force of masculinity in the world. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you're shooting from the hip and you're, you know, it just brings to mind someone who was elected president of the United States of America. <laughs> 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 shooting from the hip. But anyways, yeah. But, you know, to, like you're saying, there's like a woman brings that femininity in the world and the men, men brings a masculinity. And if each person can be balanced in that energy and come together, you know, which is truly needed right now. It's so essential to have you know, that balance, but so essential to have men being balanced in that, and then women being just as balanced and coming together because solutions are needed. And you know, leaders are needed. Inspiring humans, women and men, are needed right now to, Dear d- to bring us forward. Dear Miracle Maker, yeah. you are needed. It's yeah. so important for you to recognize what you can do no one else can do. And there's this statue in the Egyptian museum that we take people to, which I love, Tia. I can't wait to, um, Mm. at some point, I know we'll probably co-lead something on one of these trips. Uh, Doesn't that sound lovely? It's, um, there is this statue that represents the energy body. It's called the Ka statue. And it speaks about what we see in Karelian photography. When we look at Karelian photography, we see this energy around us. The auras or a leaf, you can still see the a part of a leaf that's been cut off. And this photography, that's the statue, the ka, is the arms are above the head of the statue. And it shares that we carry both the masculine and the feminine. Mm. We receive both the father's genes and the mother's genes. We are the bridge between those two. And the physical body is one that particular sex, masculine or feminine, female or male, and the, the, the energy body is the opposite. So my energy body is masculine. Greg's energy body is feminine. And when he's in the presence of a strong woman, he gets to be in his masculine fully in Mm. the physical body. When I'm in my, if I'm living in the energy of my masculine and with my husband or with the people out there that are strong in their masculine themselves, we wind up not creating synergy. If each of us is living our physical form and drawing in when necessary from the energy body, the, the other mm-hmm. energy, rather than trying to pull it from someone else, we each contain our own energy and our own possibilities. So Greg being in the masculine, his energy body being in the feminine, in the presence of a strong um, man, he can, uh, two strong men in that scenario, to really give energy, he can, he learns how to be a giver and receiver from going into the light body that's around him and then the masculine body same thing with women too many women have learned to have to live in their energy body with each other and with the masculine and not fully be able to receive in the physical world that's a lot of words to say um truly we have everything we need inside of us but And to accomplish more, we have to be in synergy 
we have to read and understand how the person around us is. And so if my husband's in the masculine, I've got to be in the feminine. Tia, if you're in your masculine, I've got to be in my feminine. Or if we're both in our feminine together, we've got to be in that giver-receiver relationship to synergize what's possible. Um, I'd love for you to take the conversation from there, Tia. Well, it's just so beautifully said, and I, I can't agree with you more. And, you know, what, what I realized, too, is that I was very much um, in my masculine, um, you know, in, in many parts of my life, but I knew that I was in touch with the core, and yet knowing that I was the taskmaster, <laughs> you know, it was like I, I would, you know, go 100% to get something done to, um, and it was like, yeah, is there anything to really prove? I don't think so. You know, so I think for me, that softening or that space of really um, being able to read that in a room, too, it's such a beautiful gift. So if I'm feeling, you know, if I'm feeling comfortable with who I am and showing up in the world in a way that um, is accepting and there's no need for anything, I'm not sourcing from anyone else, there's a way that I can flow in the world and there's a way that we all can with whether masculine or feminine, but, but taking that energy into a space and literally changing it. And so I think that's the, the piece of, of really knowing um, more about who you are, and then it allows you to f- more fully show up. And so we're not in the space of, you know, I, we, a big part of healing the feminine is that, you know, many times women haven't been very kind to each other. And um, I, I experience uh, women who... They're a little taken aback when, you know, for no reason, I'm just, you know, I compliment them or acknowledge them, and um, and they may have a perception of who I am, and then when I, you know, I come in with that feminine energy that really allows, and they even diffuses, I want to say sometimes, um, that more um, aggression that comes sometimes out of out of fear and not knowing really who they are so it, it just changes things so my my whole reason really for connecting people with their with their feminine side is that it's it's really truly a way to flow in the world and heal things just by being who you are that's so so beautiful and so deeply important what you're sharing there there's so much to pick up on um the the feminine energy it sees the whole is connected the masculine logical and brings in the division of things and and categorizes things and women i believe now have been taught to compete with each other and that's to measure one's worth based on how much is coming in their direction rather than seeing it as a whole with each other, synchronizing. Um, I grew up in a family with uh, my sister. We're so um, in such a healed space now. But growing up, we were constantly compared to each other whereas my brothers were on the same team. They were often, um, it was the uh, languaging I remember is, why can't you be more like your sister? Do more of this, do more of that. Or comparison in a way leads us to not fully own us as well. I believe Our society, our world has forgotten that we belong to each other for, and even marriages, couples can wind up competing with each other because it's so ingrained in our system to think the thought there is, um, if someone has a little bit more, that means there's a little bit less for me when the reality of life is when someone has a little bit more, now more has become available for you as well. And I think that 
when we remember that we belong together and when we remember that um, together we are more an instrument, um, again, a metaphor and uh, one instrument playing produces a particular sound. Two instruments playing can produce four or more sound, meaning it's a, um, a squaring, multiplication out so much more when two are in sync, sync together. And we haven't been reminded of this in a long time. And I think right now, more than ever, it's important to create, if you don't already have a group that you belong with, that you feel strong with, to create a group that you belong with. And then to take that to the next level is to inspire, bring together a way in which you can co-create, bring out the best in each other. Baby, I'd love for you to take it for he- from here for a second. Well, then what happens as you begin doing that is that more miracles come into your life. <laughs> you, you are the, you know, that's why I love that inspiration or in- inspired CEO because it's, you know, as we begin following our inspiration, we become more inspiring. Then all of that together leads to being the source of the miraculous and being the source of the miraculous for others. You just become more of a miracle maker as you do live that journey right and, there. And studies in corporations have shown studies in group or uh, group thinking. There is a great way to see ourselves, that first way that we can see ourselves um, that continues to elevate and stretch. And my goodness, T.O., inspired CEO Walker, <laughs> you are <laughs> creating... Well, I'm... Go ahead. I'm just saying, I, I'm, the more and more I'm, I'm listening, the more I'm just appreciating who both of you are in the world and being inspired myself just from the conversation. And I realize when, when you know, the inspired CEO, but even the reason why I love the word inspired, because that has to do with, actually, when you talked about, Dr. Sarah, being who you are and not needing to be anyone else, and that no one else can do or be who you are. And when you show up in that space and that someone takes something away that ignites something in them to do something that improves their life or their community in some way that they're inspired, um, that is like one of the biggest honors I feel that you can have. So the idea that I would be of inspiration, that we can be of inspiration to each other, it's just, you, you'll 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 find that uh, for me, I see these little lights, you know, all start to come together and just illuminate a whole room with that individual inspiration and light within each other. So, I think it's such an honor to to be someone who is uh, inspired, and and I think the other part of it too, it's like it comes from just being you. Because I don't think, you know, we, we all know when we, we see something that's not authentic, it does, it's not, at least for me, it's not very inspiring. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't, mm. There's not much that I take away from that. But when I see someone really fully living and being and embracing their life, and, and, and I, I feel that way as, as you do, where there's just, there's no scarcity. It just actually inspires me that there's more and that, um, that I want to be uh, as, as included in that inspiration as I can. So I, I think it's just beautiful that we can, you know, walk through the world, do the things that really call our hearts, and, uh, and from that space, you know, touch other people's lives, and, you know, maybe they take away a little something that encourages them to do something good for themselves, and to me, that that's an honor. It's such an honor, and I'm all teary-eyed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> truly, truly teary-eyed because um, the American Riviera Women's Entrepreneur of the Year Award, which we haven't fully yet embraced and talked about, that's your organization. We haven't talked about that yet, but it you've inspired me through mm. that so much 
with the work that you've done. And um, I want to bring that up and share with you the personal journey that I've been on since uh, uh, being offered, um, uh, uh, being, what's it called? Awarded um, the winner. Uh, awarded the yeah, winner, yeah. but uh, uh, nominated. Oh. Diana Kelly nominated. Damn. And she called a few times, and I've, I've been nominated for a lot of things and a lot of awards. And Tia, I, I usually don't accept them. I usually, I did at the Parliament of World Religions receive a huge thing there that I was so grateful for. And I didn't receive them partly because I didn't want to bother somebody around like I don't want to pick up the phone and call my parents and tell them and kind of possibly be hurt if they weren't available to show up Tia you uh, with this award with um did such a healing on me that I am able to step into a greatness and it's a little bit cultural to say this but I was born in Pakistan, came to the U.S. I was a difficult kid. I was in every direction. I loved everybody. I, you know, I could have probably gone home with a dozen different parents and been kidnapped because I just loved people. I hugged their legs and I fed the homeless and I went to, uh, shelters from an early age. My first nonprofit work was the March of Dimes. I heard about it. I went door to door. I didn't even speak English properly. And I started asking for dimes and jump roped right in front of their house and wanted to be paid a dime for every time I jumped rope and insisted. (laughs) And at 14, I got married. At 19, I embarrassed my family in a culture you don't, um, I was left for dad in an honor killing from 19 until I finally accepted the award. I was walking around this, this particular award wanting to not, um, fully bother anybody around, having to see me or appreciate me or love me. I didn't even know it was a subtle energy in there until the light was shining on me. I didn't know I had this shadow where I was afraid I would be hurt if someone said no, I can't, my parents said no, I can't make this award. And um, when I called them and it was... I was frustrated. I was stuck in traffic a little bit. And I said, okay, I'm just going to call. I'm going to use this time. I'm going to do something that I'm scared to do. And I'm going to ask and share about this award. And when I sent them the information, they were like, of course we're coming. This is so exciting. And my parents are like, my mom's getting ready. She's packed. She, I talked to her this morning for an hour. It's brought in my entire family closer together. And I'm able to see me how they see me now rather than living in a story that I didn't even know I was living in for a number of years. Um, so I really want to thank you for bringing that inspiration into my life and for integrating parts of myself that I didn't know weren't integrated until this um, award and the looking at what you do and who you are. I, of course, we met. We did that uh, just simple, all the stuff in Salt Lake City for the Parliament of World Religions for Belief Oprah's project, all of that, I saw you there. But when this came up, I really took a deeper look and got so blissed, so happy to step into this powerful, um, conscious, evolutionary officer. (laughs) So I am smiling. If you had a, you know, if you could see me right now, I'm just, my heart is warmed and I couldn't be happier than to celebrate someone like you. And you know what, what the honor for me, too, is that 
women have come into my life and on my radar that I may not have known, and then I find out just the incredible things that they're up to in the world, and and I realized that we don't celebrate each other. We just don't. It's just, you know, I don't know if it's from that, oh, I don't want to be, you know, seen or acknowledged or yet there's some fear or, you know, to downplay. No, you know, it's just what I do. And, you know, I just think, no, no, no. Like, let's, let's really, truly hold witness to your life because people's lives have been changed by your kindness, by the way you show up in the world, by your wisdom. You know, it, it's been it's been a beautiful, beautiful unfolding to get to to know more and more about you. And I feel like there's there's still more layers that I'm just appreciating each one that that you know peels back for me. And to be a part of acknowledging is such such a joy for me. I mean, I love it. Um, I don't do the typical awards, so you're in Salt Lake with nothing. <laughs> You'll get a real taste of. Uh, of what the awards are, are like, and I think, you know, I have, I have gone to so many awards and, you know, held awards for my clients, too, and I realized the thing, I thought, wow, you know, I love to see people honored, yes, and the other piece of it is, is that I want people to walk away from that experience, not only having been better for having come, but also be connected, you know, you don't isolate and sit in one table and you don't get to know anyone and there's no interaction. And so I wanted it to be dynamic and um, joyful and, you know, informative and, and, and many things. But I feel that the, the over, overarching feeling that people walk away with is being inspired and loved and, and witnessed. And I just think it's so important that we do that for each other. And so I, I just have a ball. ball. I, I absolutely, you know, it's my joy um, and pleasure yeah, that to honor incredible so women like you. Beautiful, so so beautiful. And um, for uh, we've only got a couple more minutes, about two more to chime in. Okay. Miracle makers, out of this, we want you to hold the energy of celebrate. Be inspired, co-create, make space for yourself. Baby, what would you have this close be? And we'll give Tia a few words to close with as well. You know, in all my years of doing men work, it was so critical. You know, there's components that we have to embrace. The lover, the magician, the warrior. And then there's the king. And the king is all about acknowledging other men. So I'm so, I'm in tears right now. (laughs) I'm so glad, Tia, that you're stepping into the queen energy and acknowledging other women. It's so needed. Yeah, it's so needed. Thank you. And well, this is one amazing queen. So yes, she it is. is. <laughs> that, thank you yeah. so, so much. And I, I um, want to step into the queen energy here as well with you to really share, Tia, the work that you're doing is for Women's Economic Forum, All Ladies League, which is an organization out of India. Much of the world does not have the resources we have in the U.S. And you've really stepped into bringing the inner technology, the inspiration, how and who to be out in the world. I, I love that I'm part of the Women's Economic Forum, All Ladies League as well. But you've gone to India twice now, is that correct? Yes, I have. And I'm looking forward to next year. And you've brought forward women from around the world under the leadership of Harbin. Um, and that leadership allows women around the world to celebrate one another and to communicate to the highest level possible. So I can't wait to interview you again. Thank you so much, Tia Walker. Thank you, Miracle Makers, for being with us. Thank you, baby. Thank you, Miracle Makers. Thank you, my love. Thank you, Tia. Thank you. Is history, future mystery. This moment is the game. Every second.